Hey guys, we are back in my bathroom for another exciting video where I am going to get into cosplay or update my cosplay and talk about the inspiration behind it. But this is actually kind of a double dip video because it is about the medical system. Let's get into it. So for those of you who don't know, um, the amazing Azrae, Azrae, I'm sorry I can't say your name and I don't know how to say it, formerly known as LARP House, created an awesome new cosplay tag called A Sunderland to express her anger at the American healthcare system. And it is about fairy tale characters in a post-apocalyptic post world. So because I had just completed my Nessa Rose cosplay from Wicked, I figured I might as well put her into it. So today I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to change my normal cosplay for Nessa Rose, which I'm partially wearing, um, into the post-apocalyptic facility residing Nessa Rose. And I'm gonna talk about all of the things that make me mad at the healthcare system. Also, I got a new tattoo, which you can't really see. How do I? I wanted to be able to see it, so it's facing me. There, you can kind of see it, but now it's upside down. Um, there's a better picture on my Instagram if you wanna check it out. Maybe if I go like this. Nope, you just won't see it. Um, but it's pretty great. It is based on my favorite book, The Night Circus, but we are not here to talk about that. We are going to talk about Nessa and myself. So Nessa Rose is when I cosplay her, mainly uh, when she's the politician, so the Wicked Witch of the East. So her makeup is very subdued, um, very like professional. She wears pearls, she has a professional looking jacket and a blue dress. However, in this world, she's going to have been kidnapped by the totalitarian government and taken to their facility because their original goal was to repurpose her into basically a puppet governor. Um, but when that didn't work, they just kept her locked up. So we are going to transform this look into someone that has been kept against their will in a mental facility for quite some time. Luckily, that has never happened to me, but I've had sort of similar situations in terms of discrimination with my mental health, as well as things happening that I didn't necessarily want to happen which is what I'm gonna tell you about today. So as you can see, um, Nessa's makeup is very, like I said, professional subdued. And I'm just going to take that dial and turn it up to 11 for everything on here. So we've got some light brown eyeshadow, um, some basic eyeliner, mascara, and pink lipstick, and I'm just gonna go crazy. I took off most of her jewelry, but I kept one pearl earring because I think she would fight to hold onto it. And also I like the asymmetry. Same with the hair, it's kind of already there, but we're gonna mess up the bun uh, take the pieces that I would usually have pinned back like this and just have them falling out, which is gonna be fun. And then we are going to also paint a mark on her neck to show that she is one of the people in the facility. So she's not gonna be Eminent Throp anymore, she's going to be uh, Nessa. So the first thing we're gonna do is take some foundation and we're gonna pale her out even more um, because she's been living underground for a while. So she wouldn't have like a nice complexion, I would imagine. So I'm gonna get out my super light foundation, which I have, yes, here, light porcelain from NYX, and we're just going to start putting that on. So the first story I'm going to talk about, and probably the most traumatic, if I'm being honest. So there was a period in my life where my body started going into anaphylactic shock for no apparent reason, which is about as scary as it sounds. Uh, this may not be enough foundation, we'll see. I'm just gonna start putting it over the makeup I already have. Anyway, um, so yeah, that was as scary as it sounded. And I would go into the emergency room, obviously, because that's what they tell you to do if you're in danger. Um, if you're sick, go to the emergency room. So I did that, and after the first few times, because this happened many, many times in this period of a few months, so I don't really know what happened. Um, and it looks like this foundation is out, so I'm gonna get a different bottle of Equally Pale Foundation. I don't know if someone decided that I was crazy or faking it for attention or what, but um, when I went in once, they said, they looked me over and they said there was nothing wrong with me and they were gonna give me Ativan because they thought I was having a panic attack because I have a documented anxiety disorder. They ignored me when I said, no, I know what panic attacks feel like. I've been having them my entire life. Um, here's a picture of a rash on my chest that I had before I came in. I took Benadryl and I had an EpiPen before I came into the ER because they tell you after that you should still go to the ER. But they didn't listen to me and they gave me intravenous Ativan, um, which is a tranquilizing drug if you didn't know. Um, and it didn't really do much for me because I am pretty resistant to downers, but they did it. 
and then they just had me wait for two hours or so in the emergency room didn't see a doctor again i just waited and then eventually i was discharged i kept asking them i said can you test i don't remember what the test i wanted was but i thought i had mast cell activation syndrome which causes random allergic reactions and it is comorbid with the other conditions i have so i said please please can you test for this um, and they did, eventually, after my mom called them in the ER as well and said, why aren't you testing my daughter? Um, and they didn't tell me the test results until we called back, but then they said nothing was wrong, that I was fine, basically. Um, but it kept happening. I kept getting allergic reactions, sometimes from having medication, uh, sometimes, like new medication, sometimes it would just happen. I got pretty used to it. I got used to carrying an EpiPen everywhere. Now we're gonna powder the shit out of my face. Because matte skin is important, even if you're in a facility, I suppose. So then I went in again for another attack. Um, and this is the last time I went in, because that time they didn't even bother to do anything for me, allergic reaction-wise. They just said, we're going to give you some Ativan. And the doctor left. I didn't see him again. So when a nurse came in to try and give me the Ativan, I said no. I said, I don't want to be tranked. It's not going to help. And so they said, fine. And they left, and they just left me to sit there. So my friend was with me, and eventually I said... We're leaving. There's nothing they're gonna do. So we're gonna leave. Now, I imagine being in an underground facility would take a toll on your uh, stature. So I'm going to redo my contour and make it extra heavy to try and give a sort of hollowed out facial impression. So even though the ER doctors wouldn't do anything for me, I still thought that I had MCAS. So I decided to make an appointment with an allergist. And this in and of itself took forever because Allergists are apparently really hard to see. And there was one person in the entire state where I live that specialized in the disorder I thought I had, and he had moved to New York. So I thought, okay, I'll just see a regular allergist. So the first time we called, set an appointment, they said, okay, you need to not have any antihistamines in your system for two weeks, I think it was. And at this point I had been taking daily antihistamines because they appeared to be helping the attacks stop. So I tried that, and the minute I stopped, I had an anaphylactic reaction, so we had to cancel the appointment. Um, this was during the time when I was going to the ER a lot. Oh, but we tried again. And then I called back to make another appointment. I said, you know, I'm sorry I missed it. I stopped. Maybe it wasn't two weeks. Maybe it was just three days. I feel like it was shorter. I don't remember, though. Um, so I called back. I said, I really want to see this doctor, but as of right now, whenever I go off my antihistamines, I have allergic reactions, bad ones. And so they said, okay, uh, just stay on the antihistamines and the doctor will still see you. So I say, fine. This doctor does not live where I, near where I live, um, in the same city, but all the way downtown. So it took quite a bit of time to get there, but I did. I think I had to leave work early, so I was already inconvenienced. Um, and I get there and the office is really small, I can barely get my wheelchair through, waiting for ages and I finally see the doctor. And we're going through all this paperwork with his, I think, nurse. Actually, I didn't see him for quite some time. All right, I think that'll do on the cheeks, but I'm gonna chisel the jawbone a bit more as well. So I finally see him and he's gonna do some tests. And he says, I think as a formality, so you're not on any antihistamines. And I said, no, I am, because someone at your office told me that I could keep taking them because otherwise I end up in the hospital. He said, oh, well, I can't, I can't test you then. So at this point, I'm really frustrated. Obviously, someone's given me the wrong information. I came all the way out here for no reason. And I say, okay, but can you please just tell me what you know about mast cell activation syndrome? Because I'm pretty sure that's what I have and I don't know how to treat it, but I need help. And he looks at me and he goes, oh, we don't believe in mast cells here. And I look at him, my mouth falls open. And I'm like, how can you not believe in a disease? It's not like it's Santa Claus, it's a disease. I understand that there's not a lot of treatment yet and there isn't that much research, but it's a disease. You can't just not believe in a disease. I was flabbergasted. So the next thing we're gonna do is work on some exhaustion. So I'm going to try and make some shadows under my eyes because I imagine if you're living in a facility, actually the powder will probably look good on this dress for the sort of post-apocalyptic look I'm going for. But I imagine if you're living in a facility, you're not gonna be getting the best sleep. So I've never made dark circles before. So this is going to be a bit of experimentation, but I am excited to try. So I'm going to try and take 
this blue here. Just get some on my brush and then see what we can do. So anyway, he leaves uh, because he will not look at me or anything like that because I had the antihistamines. Therefore, I am, I guess, not worthy of being seen or talked to. So he sends his nurse back in. And at this point, I've already been there for a few hours, I would say, because this looks like a black eye because she, there was a problem with getting my records, I guess, even though that should have all been handled beforehand. Um, so we had been calling people. So she comes back in and we're talking about scheduling another appointment and we still don't have the records. So she goes to call someone and finally I think, do I want to see this man again? This, this doctor who doesn't believe in the disease I think I have. Do I want to? He was pretty condescending. He was rude to me. And I was just thinking, why am I bothering? So while the nurse was gone, I got up, I got back in my wheelchair, and I left. And I didn't come back. Uh, thankfully, these anaphylactic attacks have mainly calmed down, but I still don't know what's causing them. And I don't know if I ever will, honestly, because I haven't found anyone. Maybe when I move to another city, I'll look for an MCAS specialist and see if that'll help. But at this point, it's pretty much just hope nothing bad happens and go from there. So as you can see, we've got some shadows. These are way too intense um, because I don't want her to look like she's been punched in the face. So I think we're going to mix this with some brown. You know, I might just use the contour powder and see how that blends it out. I should note that I am not even getting the worst of it because I am incredibly lucky to have fairly good insurance from my family. So I am able to at least get most of the treatment that I need. Obviously, a lot of people in this country do not have that option, um, but that's a topic for a whole other video. But yes, needless to say, I do understand how lucky I am. You know, I kind of like this ridiculous shadow look because it makes her look a bit like a corpse, which is kind of what I was going for. I think if Nessa were kidnapped, and taken out of her role as a ruler, she would be very depressed, uh, probably wouldn't be sleeping very much anyway. So maybe that fits. I will definitely do some final looks uh, when I put my glasses back on, but for now I think we'll just leave it. So the next thing we're gonna do is take the makeup and amplify it. Because I think Nessa, even if she were in a facility, would keep trying to wear makeup and keep a presentable look about her. So we're just gonna do that, but look as though someone who is not entirely stable put it on. So we're gonna take a darker brown shade and just kind of go ham all over. Recently, I had a nurse tell me that I was a problem child or that I, my body was being a problem child, something like that, because I had been explaining to her about the aforementioned anaphylactic attacks. Let's note that I am an adult. I am 22 years old. And all of this is completely out of my control, so referring to me as a problem child is really not the best that anyone could have done. But I've noticed that a lot of people are not necessarily known for their tact. I made a video a while back about all the idiotic things people have said to me on the street or on dating apps about being in a wheelchair and chronically ill. So we already know that people's sensitivity meters are perhaps not where they should be. However, when it's medical professionals, I think it takes a whole new level just because you'd think they'd know better, wouldn't you? Um, working with disabled and sick people for their entire careers, you'd think would give you a bit, of, bit more tact, but apparently you'd be wrong, or at least I am. All right, so I think we've got that for shadow down. Um, so we're going to put that back. Now I'm just going to put on some eyeliner. Uh, normally I would use gel liner or cream liner, but for this I do want it to smudge quite a lot, so I, I'm just going to use a pencil instead. And we're just going to scribble that all over the lid. And again, an attempt of someone trying to look pretty with very limited means at her disposal. I imagine she's using like dirt or a, an actual pencil, whatever she can get her hands on to keep some semblance of normality, you know, some, some feeling of beauty, really whatever she can do 
So we're just gonna scribble that all over. Normally I would do her lower liner on the waterline, but I think doing it on the lash line gives even more of that sort of haunted effect, which is what we're going for. So now that that's done, we are going to take some mascara and just sort of scribble it. I want it to look a bit like she's been crying. So we're gonna take this, put it on our lashes and then just drag it down. I hope you can see what I'm doing, but I do really need this neat mirror. Although I suppose it doesn't matter too much since I am trying to get a messy look here, but I still want some sort of cohesiveness going on. But we're just gonna drag the mascara wand down under the eyes to look a bit like she was trying to do some mascara and just missed. And then to finish it off, I'm gonna put my glasses back on. Oh boy, this is a lot of makeup. It is a very sticky feeling. Not to say now that all medical professionals are bad. I've had very good experiences as well, but I think it is important to acknowledge that we've had some bad apples and that should really change. So the next thing I'm going to do in terms of cosmetic makeup is we're gonna find my lipstick. If I can find it, there it is. And we're just gonna kind of sloppily draw around the mouth area. Normally, I'm very careful, um, but today, again, we do want it to kind of look like we were just frantically trying to appear beautiful. So we're just gonna draw it all over the place. And there we are. So that's pretty much it for the face makeup look. Then for the hair, we're just gonna sort of pull it out of the bun like this. Get some of those strands out. Uh, so this is the finished look. Real talk, I was going to put the brand on my neck, but I cannot figure out how to make it look good and I don't want it to look sloppy uh, since it's supposed to be official. So we're just gonna go with this and this will be the finest, final Apocalypse Nessa Rose look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well as hearing about some of my medical horror stories and I will see you guys next week. Bye.